Welcome, my friends. Welcome to a place of refuge in tumultuous times. Welcome to a virtual community that proudly, emphatically embraces the mission of seeking to understand Torah, not just for the sake of some kind of intellectual satisfaction, but kihi chayenu, v'orach yamenu, because Torah is our life and the length of our days. As I sat preparing for a weekly encounter with this week's Sedra, the weekly portion is Naso, numbers 4, 21 and following, Military and police helicopters were still flying over Santa Monica four or five or six at a time. The noise was deafening. The implications of their presence, deeply troubling. Now, I didn't know the proper word to use to describe the sound of a helicopter blade slicing through the air. So I asked the aviation specialists at Google. It seems that my options were three. Chuff, chuff, wop, wop, or the ever famous thwop, thwop. Chuffing and whopping and thwopping have accompanied all of our days here since the initial invasion of COVID-19. Those sounds signified and still signify the imperative of sheltering in place and social distancing. Stay off the beach, wop, wop. Don't walk on the stand. Thwop, thwop, get back to your homes. Chuff, chuff. Yeah, it was kind of okay. Their sounds made me feel that our lives were not spinning out of control, but then George Floyd was murdered by a policeman in full view of his colleagues and of some civilians in Minneapolis. Marchers came from and to Santa Monica. Protesters came from and to Santa Monica. Looters mainly came to Santa Monica. We watched the protesters and marchers to our left from our apartment porch, our Mirpesa, immediately adjacent to the beach. Large numbers, orderly, noisy, and not much social distancing. We watched the looters from the Mirpesa to our right professionally emptying specifically targeted stores. Cars lined up, ready to go. Those targets were jewelry stores, high-end clothing stores, and even one store that specialized in $500 sneakers. The looters, by the way, for your interest, were not practicing social distancing either. We watched the fires toward our direct north as Midtown Santa Monica stores and restaurants were burned, usually to cover up any evidence left behind by the looters. There were more and more chuff chuffs and wop wops and thwop thwops. We could see the searchlights from the helicopters lighting up areas at night, and we could only imagine what the pilots were seeing. Elsewhere, the downward draft of the helicopter blades were actually being used for crowd control and enforcing the curfews. I don't think that I ever paid much attention to how helicopters could be used for such a purpose. And then I started remembering the Vietnam era. I guess that I had naively thought that that was somehow all in the past, how wrong I was. Now today, that thwopping frightens me. Why? Because that thwopping is necessary to protect me from other people. Necessary. And therefore especially frightening. So how do I begin this week's conversation? By saying Shabbat Shalom, by wishing each of you a peaceful Sabbath. In three places in that section of the Bible known as Prophets and Nevi'im, we find explicit warnings, Jeremiah 6.14, Ezekiel 13.16, Micah 3.5, against telling people, Shalom, Shalom, Ve'en Shalom, against telling people, don't worry, all is well, peace, peace, Ve'en Shalom. But there isn't peace. 
in each of those texts, the leaders of the Jewish nation, priests, prophets, kings, were excoriated by God for misleading the people, for telling them everything's okay, not to worry, things aren't as bad as they might seem. Actually, things were much worse. For that reason, shalom, shalom, vein, shalom has become a byword in Hebrew. Be wary of those who tell you to disbelieve your own eyes because they say despite what you see and despite what you actually know, things are actually quite fine. Be wary of those leaders who tell you only what they think you need to hear in contradistinction to what your eyes and your brains are actually perceiving and telling you. Things are not well in American society. So what's very wrong with those who promise that all is well? Well, they stop us from struggling to fix what has been broken for hundreds of years. They stop us for strengthening the defenses of society as a whole. They lull us into a self defeating complacency. They allow what ails American society to metastasize to such an extent that healing may be impossible. The Cedra Nasso, by the way, is deservedly famous as being the place where we first encounter what is called Birkat Kohanim, the priestly blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God lift up the divine face to you, be gracious to you, may God lift the divine face to you and give you, there's the word, shalom, v'yasem lecha shalom. Here we confront shalom again. Note that blessings in our sedra flow from God, not from the Kohanim. May God give you peace. The Kohanim were only to serve as channels, as sacred vessels for God's blessings. And those blessings were very powerful. I remember when I would go to every week to a service of Shabbat morning in an Orthodox synagogue and the fathers would gather their children at the point of the priestly blessing underneath their talitot, lest the children's eyes focus on the Kohanim's hands that were raised in blessing. Blessings could be dangerous. Power from God. But please, by the way, don't expect me to make any references to Dr. Spock here. I am beyond such pandering. Just know that the kids might somehow be injured or considered impudent if they watch too closely, or so it is believed. Have you ever given much thought to what shalom actually means? It comes from the Hebrew triliteral root, shin, lamed, mem. Shalem means whole, W-H, whole or complete. Mushlam means perfect. Shalom shows up serving as the best word for well-being. Ha-shalom lo? How's he doing? Ma-shlomech? How are you doing? In Israel, shalom always serves. Hi, shalom. You don't say shal, shalom. Even though the English Arabic yalabai has actually come to push aside shalom as a way of also saying goodbye, yalla bye. We say, Allah ha shalom, may peace be unto you when we need to say of blessed memory. Some actually believe that Jerusalem's original name was Ir Shalom, the city of peace. Solomon's Hebrew name was shalom, Shlomo in sharp contradistinction, contradistinction to his father, David, the warrior king, Shlomo, he could build the temple. And the beloved woman in the Song of Songs is, right, Shlomit. Going even further, the rabbis assert that one of God's names is Shalom. And Maimonides teaches that the giving of Torah was intended to bring Shalom to the world. Because all of its paths are peace. Peace is something that is established between two or more persons or parties, where once there was separation, division, divisiveness, conflict, shalom, points to a coming together, a 
lowering of tensions, a successful bringing together of those who once threatened or troubled another. Just for comparison's sake, namaste points more to healing spiritual differences. I recognize the godliness that abides within you. But when we wish another shalom, we are expressing our yearning to bridge the gaps among all of the differences that mark and trouble our lives. We acknowledge that true peace might never surround us in our lifetimes, that we share a yearning, that working together we can at least agree that shalom is worthy, a transcendent, sacred goal for all of humankind. Shalom is not something that we yet have, but it is something that we acknowledge that we desperately need. Vyasem l'cha shalom. May God, working through us, make peace a shared aspiration, even as God, working through the koanim, allowed our people to sense what we were capable of achieving. So I'm going to wish us all Shabbat Shalom. As the weeping and the raging and the pursuit of social justice and social change and racial equality go on, as false promises are swept into dustbins, even as the thwapping still continues, may shalom be written on our banners and on our hearts. And let's promise to see each other next week.